Hi, this is Janice Selby of Court 2020, and I took a left at the valley. I know we shouldn't have to scream that we're atheists, you know, we don't have non-astrologers and all that, but with the religious people taking over the world, I mean, we can either speak up or be pushed into a corner. I'm proud of being an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen, I call it how I see it. I say it's ignorance and you just call it faith and unsubstantiated claims, that's something to be ashamed, I'm an atheist, atheist, atheist. Coming to you at the best Gideon Atheist Podcast of 2020, this is Left in the Valley. My name is Kevin, and my girlfriend said I never listen, or something like that. <laughs> Joining me as usual is the award-winning team of putting up with my lousy dad jokes. <laughs> she wonders what happens if you're half scared to death twice. Nancy. Ooh, like that. <laughs> There's a qu- only a quarter of you left. Yeah, thank you. And she wonders what was the best thing before sliced bread. <laughs> Christina. Uh, Betty White. White. <laughs> <laughs> and she wonders if you have partial sexual reassignment surgery, are you a near miss? <laughs> Kirsten. I don't got one for that one. <laughs> Ladies, welcome that seems back. like really intentional. <laughs> you might want to check on that joke. <laughs> oh, come on. It's part of the charm of this podcast. Guys, welcome back. I hope you had a great week. Um, We actually had a really, really, really shit week. So we're very excited to kind of just like chill with you peeps. We're going to bash people today? Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't like other people. It was fully like internal and family Uh, issues. I I, I got a job application in. That's pretty good. (laughs) That's very good. Very good. And and it's not raining today. Incredibly. It's only blowing. Um, Okay. Rain is wonderful, guys. Don't bash on the rain. Yeah. Only in small quantities. It's fine. I love. Okay. But they were like big droplets. I'm not listening to you. You're a weirdo. No. No. You're just a weirdo. And you're not looking at all of the places that are currently flooded in Mission. Oh, yeah, the flooding is not fun. <laughs> uh, so today we're going to be talking to Jason Hannerfield. That's going to be whoop. the second half of the show. But first, uh, let's do a bit of chit-chat. Well, <laughs> guys, uh, like I said at the beginning... America's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> nope. We did win the Canadian Atheist <laughs> Podcast wow. of 2020. That was amazing. I had no loved, idea. guys. <laughs> They love are, us. They really love us. People, Our three listeners yeah, have a lot of clout. Are, they do. Wow. <laughs> what an honor. What an I mean, it just, just gave me tingles all over. Yeah, yeah this, this was uh, something that started from the uh, Canadian Atheist, obviously, uh, group. And um, by there was an article by uh, some, written by somebody called Indy. Mm-hmm. So, Indy... Um, we love you. Yeah. Yes. And you know what? Get, yeah. get in touch with us, Indy, and uh, frankly, we'll bring you on the show. because yeah. I think, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Can I be your it's friend? Totally, totally worth it. <laughs> I, I think that deserves a t-shirt, too. <laughs> Part of the team. Do we have t- Oh, we do have t-shirts. Yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, she never wears hers, obviously. Okay, I have better style than that. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, my God. What a way. <laughs> okay, if it wasn't like pastel pink or something, oh my God. I could do it. Okay. But it's not. So <laughs> you'll get what I give you, and you'll like it. <laughs> so, uh, so we were up against. Oh, well, first of all, it was a complete shock to be nominated. I first it was. found. I first found out when it, I saw it on Twitter. You know, since you mentioned on Twitter. So I look at LETV podcast and say, "Oh, congratulations to our runner-up uh, podcast of the year." Blah blah blah. I said, "What?" Start reading the article, and here we are. We're nominated, and we're nominated against some pretty heavy hitters. You know, we got like the Brainstorm podcast, Corey Johnson, that we've had on the show before a couple of years ago in April. If you look in the archives, that was an amazingly wacky show. <laughs> um, we had the running up, running up against life, the universe, and everything else podcast. Which there's also you know these mm-hmm. these ads that we actually play for them as well on the the, the break, uh, a, a podcast called Logic. Now I've never heard this one, but I'm, I'm really gonna have to look it up. Um, and uh, one another one called Reality Check. That's another podcast I've never heard of. And another one called Vice Rhino. Now if you don't know Vice Rhino, th- this guy's huge. He's got a lot of YouTube videos, and he's got a quite the following. So, uh, stop petting the cat. She's I'm sorry, you put a bandana on the cat. I didn't do such a thing. <laughs> it's so cute. Well, really, you know, kudos to Indy for thinking about doing something like this mm-hmm. and then dedicating the time to listening to all of us. Yes. And the reviews we he did. We all know how much of a chore that is listening to us. They were solid, <laughs> professional 
reviews, and, you know, just the way he looked <sighs> at all of us and how he rated everybody. Oh, yes. It, they were wonderful reviews. Everybody got a great review. Uh, I'm surprised that one of the podcasts that uh, our friends from the uh, Legion of Reason weren't there. So I'm surprised that maybe Indy's not familiar with that podcast of so Dr. Randy Tyson. Indy, if you're listening, I'll encourage you to have a look at that. Uh, Randy Tyson's been doing this. Even before we started. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm just going to read you here what the article says. He goes through every podcast and he goes through their categories and he puts a couple of categories of what made him good and not. Yeah. And there was a question of production, uh, production quality. And one of the big uh, things was uh, to be uh, constant, you know, to be mm -hmm. there, uh, have a presence. That, and some of, some of them lost because of that, right? Some of them lost because, you know, uh, the show went on a hiatus for a couple of months or something like that. So, so and then he comes... Uh, in the article, you keep reading you know, the, the article about everything about uh, all the, uh, the the accolades he gives to all the other podcasters. I'm just going to jump in here. Do we know this person's a dude? Yes, we do. Okay, just making sure. I'm like... Because yeah, Indy, made, Indy could be... In my brain, Indy's like a girl's name. Yeah. I'm like, no, no, it's, I, I looked him up. Oh, fantastic. And looked at, looked at his picture. And I, I, I'm pretty confident he's, he's a male. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, of course, here's the article I'm going to read. It says, Andy, a winner in the category of podcast or show of the year is... Draw. <laughs> it says, what's this? I don't even know they did it when they weren't even nominated, but the Amy's of Secular Soup <laughs> have managed to pull off the upset of the year, winning the Canadian Atheist Podcast of the sh uh, or Show of the Year Award despite not even being the Canadian Podcast. What a shocking turn of event. Who could have foreseen this? <laughs> says, well, wait, no. I've just been informed at the business end of a gun wielded by the immortal assassin Nancy that secular <laughs> soup win is clearly a mistake. I know, he came so quick. <laughs> it was a pleasure. <laughs> to be fair, Nancy, staring I saw that. at you when you're in your, like, assassin mode mm -hmm. is pretty intimidating. It is. So it is. It is. But, uh, it's kind of understandable. It, it's, <laughs> that, to me, meant a lot because it actually means that he actually he did listen to a couple of I our know. shows and the running gag. He, he understands the <laughs> running gag of... Who knows? He might listen to all our shows. Well, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. That's he really awesome. knows us. So, yeah. every nominee for podcast or show of the year uh, is good, very good, all well worthy of the nominations, and I agree. But none are as entertaining as Left at the Valley. Aww. From start to finish, each show is an absolute delight. <laughs> They open with an absolute banging hip hop theme. I'm an atheist, <laughs> yeah. and then segue to host Kevin Francis sharing his truly god awful oh. but often hilarious <laughs> dad are. jokes as he introduces co-hosts. They really are. It just gets better from there. Left at the Valley is packed to the brim with good nature irreverence and more running gags than you can shake a stick at. <laughs> I actually called out a few of them above. The current prank war with the Secular Soup podcast and the claim that his story, history expert Nancy Wise Gallagher is secretly an immortal assassin who has on multiple occasions taken out other members of the crew, <laughs> particularly Kevin, to run the show herself or with just her and the other lady hosts. I think at this point we've all taken out Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've tried. I we've tried. I we've tried. In silence. Yeah. Each episode usually features a guest to discuss a, t a specific topic, but before the guest comes on, the crew chats about current events and runs a series of regular segments, such as Another Brilliant Moment, brought to you by religion. Thus far, I've made it a point of highlighting how entertaining Left of the Valley is, but that doesn't mean it's chock f it's, it isn't chock full of very useful, very important, and very relevant con and content. And that means a lot to me that he says that, too. Um, despite the general lighthearted tone of the show, the discussions with the guests that follow us can dive into some pretty intense topics, but the hosts usually manage to navigate them ably, uh, giving them the gravitas they, they warrant without drowning in despair, and they always end up on an upbeat note after asking their guests to narrate a stinger for them, often fumbling it hilariously. <laughs> but the know, fumbles are honor, the best. Yeah, it, it was a an lot honor to fumble. be nominated, if only to have the pleasure of reading that review. Yes. And the review of all of them. They are so well written. And, oh, yeah. and they, they managed to, to bring out the essence of each of the... Each of the podcasts. So, thank you, Indy, whoever you are. We're looking forward to talking uh, with you and meeting with you. And, and I'm not even and done And I here. promise I'll put the Uzi away while you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even done here. He says, you get it all from Left of the Valley. Plenty of debunking of pseudoscience, lots of calling on and criticizing religious stupidity, in-depth discussion and analysis of controversial topics and ideas, and all of it in a fun, easy to listen to package. Uh, to package every week, Kevin Francis, Nancy Weiss Gallagher, Christina Randall, and Kirsten Nicholson are all excellent hosts, and the guests they bring on never fail to entertain and inform. 
Oh, that is high praise. It is high praise, and fr- frankly, I, happy. I will lift my metaphorical glass to you three ladies. You certainly deserve this award, and uh, thank you so much. And thank you to our listeners. Yeah, oh, yeah. For, for our, our th- maybe five listeners now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> putting up with us all this time uh, and uh, making sure uh, that's really encouraging. That really encourages us to keep doing the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, for uh, we love you guys. Yeah, yeah. Down the road and things to come. Anyway, in the meantime, we got. Oh my god, you make me laugh. <laughs> All right, this is from our uh, patron, uh, Adrian. Says, hi, everyone. Love the discussion between Kirsten and Kevin before the show started. A lot of what you talked about touch on issues my wife and I face here in England as well. And Kirsten is correct. You should do a show on that. Congratulations. Well-deserved award. E- if se- even if Secular Soup tried to steal it away from you. <laughs> we beat him back with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned not knowing the reality check, which surprised me as is one of my regular podcasts. However, it is more of a skeptical podcast than an atheist one, so that may be why. Anyway, one of the hosts often highlights GiveWell.org which is a charity that evaluates other charities for effectiveness Ooh, that's aspects, perfect. such as overheads and uh, to ensure mm-hmm. donations are used for what the donors intend uh, and uh, to do the most good. Yeah. This, that sounds like a top 10 to me, Nancy. Mm-hmm. Uh, which leads me uh, uh, to an off comment by Kevin when he said it's all about, um, when he said all about, uh, said about all the so-called good religious charities do <laughs> in the latest episode of European Skeptic, uh, Skeptic Podcast, or ESP for short, in the segment Poking the Pope, they highlighted the Catholic charity Peter's Pence and the good it does. A good charity generally has an overhead of 10 to 20 percent range, uh, where this charity has an overhead of the 80 percent range. Whoa. And some of the money is also used to cover shortfalls in the operating budget of the Catholic Church. The world would be better wow. off without these Abrahamic religion. Sorry for the long email. I just find. Oh, we love long emails. <laughs> I just find so many things in your podcast to comment on. Aww. Again, congratulations. Oh. And you all deserve an award. Adrian. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. You're the best. And Adrian is quite correct. If uh, one of the reasons, if you if you're going out there and you want to give to a charity, you ask them how much their administration costs mm-hmm. uh, are on the other, other thing. If they're giving you a number of over twenty percent, even twenty percent, I would go for at least stick around ten. Yeah. If, if they go over twenty percent, it's not worth. It. Yeah, because well, they, they, they money okay, where is that going? Is it going to like oh lining the pockets of the higher ups? Like okay, what's going on here? Marketing costs. Is it going to pay off pedophiles? What's it, where is it going? <laughs> You're not pointing at the church, are you? But at this, not at all. I believe, however, I think, and, and I, don't quote me on this. I'll have to ask uh, somebody, in, uh, an expert on this. But we I believe, quote you on by it. law in Canada, in Canada, you only have to actually give ten percent uh, to uh, to to. I mean, you you can have a charity, and ninety percent of your your uh, your uh, expenditures can disappear into administrative costs. That's so stupid. And I think that's I think that's one of the, Gross. the that's, failures. That's, of our not a, that's not a charity. That's, that's not a charity. It's, it's really? no. That's a that's an excuse for for a, a, you know a, a small mm-hmm. gratuity. Yeah. But, what, what's the word? I, I was going to say yeah. discount or gratuity. It's it's, it's crazy not. when you look at the big charities. Yeah. And how many of them? don't actually put a lot of what you're donating to the causes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, the big ones. I can't name them right now because I have a horrible memory. But, like, yeah, definitely go and look that, like, if look into that website. I, I, I just don't that. understand why these charities need, feel the need to also have a CEO with a six-figure uh, Because salary. people I are mean, greedy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't get it. There, uh, there are, however, are a, a number of great little charities. Uh, one of them that I'm particularly fond of uh, in the States is uh, uh, Modest Needs. Yes. And I, I really wish we had a Canadian version of that. Same. Uh, there'd be a great... Excuse me, cat. Fuck off. <laughs> don't, don't swear to the cat. He's making noise. <laughs> Other than purring. Purring meowing. is an acceptable cat noise. <laughs> <laughs> and meowing except when it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> Makes amazing. Meals. All right. Um, I don't know if we want to get into this other topic here. The America. <laughs> oh. We just uh, we, we need to sing a farewell song because it is dead. Yeah, America, you're I, dead. I, I not, think, not, I think not, America's democracy died. This not, weekend. not yet. Because unfortunately, we've got this horrible period before the election. 
but it's going to depend on what happens in the election. But uh, that's I mean get your red cloaks it, ready ladies. It, it's, uh. it's, yeah, it's just it's just amazing to me that you know with the impeachment of Donald Trump and a lot of people were predicting of course that the Senate would just basically yeah, run right over and they not did. Not as much as they did. But like, yeah, it's just oh, absolutely amazing. Shit. Uh, and out in the open. Yeah. It's like we don't it, it, the, I mean like the it, things they said. Yeah. It's like um what? Yeah, I mean the, the the motto for the whole thing is he did it and we don't care. That's exactly yeah, it. That's and exactly. that's you know out in the open mm-hmm. they didn't they they don't care I guess about their reputation. No, and Nothing. it's funny. It's also funny that none of the uh, Republicans that were called uh, and uh, basically the, his lawyers and all that none of them defended his character. Well, you because you can't. You, well, because you can't. You exactly. can't. Oh, oh, and of course, what was that uh, that 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 clown there? I forget his name. Um, McConnell? No, 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 no. The, 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 one of the lawyers. There's just too oh. many. Scipione? No. I don't know the names. Uh, I, I'll I didn't come, I'll come to me. And, and he, he basically Seculo? said. Seculo? Sorry? Seculo? No. The other the glasses, bald head. Anyway, and he, he, he goes our, with, our, with our, a straight our, face and he says basically, he says. Every politician thinks that his or her re-election is for the good of the country, and if they're doing something for the re-election of their re-election, which they believe is for the good of the country, then it's not illegal. And I thought, what? I you um, said that with a straight face. Dershowitz? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah. oh, I thought you meant it, but yeah, Dershowitz, um, Dershowitz is batshit crazy. Oh, Nobody agrees with him. No, it's, 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 to, to see that on the center floor, I mean, let's, um, let's put so it in So basically extreme. you can murder people? Yeah, exactly. Right? So yeah. if you're Donald Trump and you think Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders, for example, is going to take your place, then uh, my re-election is in the good will, uh, the, for the good of the country, then I might as well eliminate this candidate and kill him or have him killed, and that's legal? I mean, are you kidding me? I, I can I can make turn this to the good. One of the other candidates. Take him out. I say that. The, the, we are joking. Yes, yes. we are. We joking. are joking. Don't like actually. However, FBI listening. We're joking. However, Nancy is wearing her combat fatigue today. <laughs> are you heading to Washington? I think? I, oh. I've gotten as far as I have by not. <laughs> anything. There was a, a, a political cartoon. What is the What is the name of the uh, the, the, the 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 lady that holds the scales? Oh, of justice. Just, um, lady, lady, lady justice. Lady yeah, justice. Lady, no, lady justice. I think it's yeah, just called yeah. the, justice. The, lady justice. The political cartoon shows her on the ground. Oh, I've seen that uh, one. Yeah, gagged. Uh, yeah, with her her hands Pin. up like in surrender, and you see. Just hands and cuffs of gentlemen of two men yeah, with a Republican yeah. uh, elephant. Actually, that's a Canadian the... cartoon. Oh, it's what? It was a Canadian cartoon from a Halifax Journal, I believe. Yeah, uh, it Halifax was. Newspaper. That's the most powerful. Yeah. That's the first one that I've seen. Actually, that one came out uh, months ago. ago. It, came, it came out during the uh, Brent Kavanaugh. Oh, did it? Oh, I yeah. didn't see it. At yeah, that point. but it's very apropos. Or I may still. have been forgotten it. Yeah, it's still very apropos. Yeah. yeah. And it it is exactly that. It's it's very, it's a very very powerful image. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the the funny thing is, a lot of people are going out there and basically saying, you know, oh, what was the point of doing all this this, um, this circus? At least now it's out in the open. But that's exactly it. The, the 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 Democrats had to do this because they had to. If you don't if you don't try them in the uh, in the Senate, you're basically doing the Republicans' work for them. Yeah. They had to at least have the Republicans go out into the open and basically. Show to the world how, uh, how yeah how they did their job and they did it really well yeah they did it yeah. really well. I I hope that every single Republican running for re-election just has swarms of people oh with signs of what they've said and just be like really really. <laughs> it's a, yeah. it's outrageous, but there is still a good thirty, almost forty percent of Americans die hard. That doesn't matter, no uh, matter what you say. But there were seventy four percent that said they wanted, according witnesses. to polls, they wanted uh, witnesses and, yes. and documents. Well, now, not how- all of those seventy four are going to vote. We know that because it's a poll. Mm-hmm. But if fifty two percent of them mm-hmm. vote. And get the Republicans out. We've got it. We the the yeah. U.S. has a chance to restore. Well, the, the, what I've been worried about all of this time with the with the impeachment is what the hell are they doing behind the scenes yeah. now that nobody is watching? Yeah, yeah. And right. that that that's really mm-hmm. devastating, you know, to 
to democracy that they can yeah. hide. You know, look at what they're doing in the open. My God, what are they hiding? It's a it, lot. <laughs> Yeah. You know, the, the funny thing is, is you know, as soon as uh, before the trial, when uh, McConnell and I think it was Ted Cruz, well, basically, oh no, it was Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham basically went on Fox News and basically said, well, it doesn't matter. During the trial, we're going to vote whichever way Trump tells us to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when they put their hand on the Bible and swore an oath to remain impartial, I would have had them arrested right there. You just you just contempt of court. Do whatever you want to say. You just you just basically lied and I we've I've got video evidence that you're not in here as an impartial juror. Mm-hmm. So no. Goodbye. But Yeah. Yeah, well it it's it's it just it, it depends it depends on who the candidate is and um it shouldn't it it just say any Democrat, let's get him in there or her. Um but it depends on who turns out on the on the mm-hmm. at the polls because it's going to be a bloody warfare at this point. Right. Yeah, it's bloody. I just take this moment and look forward into the future when all the old people are dead, <laughs> and this next generation is in control. And let's just say our motto is "Let's eat the rich." <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> don't eat billionaires. All <laughs> right, my dear Nancy, you got a top ten for us. Oh, well, Indy, Indy said we always end on a high note, so I was hoping this would be a high note. And we actually, end the show on a high note. Yeah, yeah, not the yeah. No, no, the show. this this segment. Um, this it, Kevin gave gave us a really good idea. Because I think last week. And I ran with it, and and I'm hoping that it's going to be enjoyable. I think it is. It's a lot of fun. It's called the Mandela Effect. <gasps> oh, I love this effect. It's so cool and shows the the how faulty the brain is. Yes, I love yes. it. Okay, I'll do something. I'll, I'll do something that you do better than I do, but I'm going to ask you to do it on the spot. Okay. Explain the Mandela effect. You're wonderful at doing these okay. things. Okay. Okay. Um. So I'm a. Okay. It's when you have something that, as like a culture, you think is accurate, and you just assume it's like knowledge, but then you go back and it's like totally wrong. Yeah. And and you're like almost think okay like how did i ever think that was calm like that was correct like what is going on where did this come from like what is going on and the reason it's called the mandela effect is because for a long time people just assumed mandela was dead yeah they just thought he was dead it was named after Nestle, Nestle and mandela. he wasn't dead but people just it was like common knowledge that he was dead yeah. and people just assumed it was correct and never questioned it and then they found out he was alive, and they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Wait, was, what? It was named after Mandela, and he, uh, a lot of people had assumed he had died somewhere in the late 90s, uh, 80s, I think. And for the longest time, people thought, you know, it was just a figure of history. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you know, he pops out of prison, and he's running South Africa, and all of a sudden, it's like, well, what the hell? Like, I mean, yeah. Wasn't this guy dead? And this is what it was named after. So it's that's basically a, love Christina. <laughs> a, misconce- a common misconception. Yes. I think it's a good way to describe it. So here's some common misconceptions, and I don't know whether to say them or the, to ask you, because this is a group thing. It's not mm-hmm. like th- those of us who are sitting, you know, that th- this crew believes it and everybody else doesn't. It's that there are millions of yep. people yep. who are affected by the same thing. So first one um, is the, the, the Monopoly man, Monocle. He has a top hat. He's dressed up. Does he have a monocle? I have no idea. Well, everybody What's your pictures him with a monocle. I, t- I totally not. picture him with a monocle. But he he has not. no monocle. No. The thing is, when I you totally picture him, picture him with you a can, monocle. <laughs> when, you, when you picture him in your mind, can't you see the, the sun glinting off mm, that no. monocle? See, I, think, I, think the, I think the confusion happens here with him and Mr. Peanut. That because exactly. he also has a top hat and that's he, he has does a have a monocle. That's exactly. That's oh exactly my it. gosh, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, Thank you. It is Mr. Peanut. I forgot about Mr. Peanut. I feel like yeah, I'm more right? often that's, see the Monopoly it. man with a bag of cash. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. See, and I grew up seeing Mr. Peanut way more often because my dad always had, like, a thing of peanuts. Did you see the commercial us. where they kill Mr. Peanut? No. <laughs> it's a commercial speak- where Mr. Peanut dies. Okay, so, so, yeah. so speaking of peanut butter, um, I'm sick and I send you guys out to get me some Jiffy peanut butter. What do you come back with? 
Jiffy. If I say, I need Jiffy. Jiffy. I like Jiffy's my my favorite. I know there's, brand. there's Jiff, I think, but I don't think there's Jiffy. No, That's it's right. the J I F F. It's the J I F F. It's Jiff. It's like saying Timmy's. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, add in. I don't even think there's two Fs. I think it's just J I F. Oh, is it J I F? Okay. I don't know how to spell. Yeah, but mm. <laughs> there are so many people that love Jiffy peanut butter. <laughs> well, true. see, I I, ju- I just totally see that as the same as we do with Tim's. Like yeah. Tim Hortons, we just say Timmy's. That's people true. say, hey, That's get true. me a Timmy's. Okay, go it's into the movies, slang. Silence of the Lambs, and Clar- FBI agent Clarice Starling um, goes to see, what's it, Anthony Hopkins oh, as Lecter, love that movie. and <laughs> does he say, hello, Clarice? Mm, I have oh. no idea. Oh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. He says, he good morning. <laughs> he doesn't say hello. Wait, people he thought say, he, people just, just, he just says, said hello. Good hello, morning. hello Clarice. Yeah. No. Oh, see, I never. I've no. only seen the movie once. Oh, yeah, well, so, so high, but... was it so? But was it the imitators that started the Hello Clarice, and then it came from people who imitated? Yeah, I, that's probably oh. what happened. It's like with with like. Oh, we're probably going to mention this. I, one, so I, I think you're talking about the exact same yeah, thing I've been thinking of this whole time. <laughs> the Star Wars one. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> we're thinking of a different one. Oh, that face is definitely. I was thinking Star Trek. Doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. Oh, the death scene. Okay. No. No, no. We are totally. <laughs> she's, right she's, now. she's singing singing Scotty. We are not vibing. <laughs> okay. Oh, the we damn got it. We got it. Damn other. it, Jim. <laughs> For Christ's sake, Jim! I'm a surgeon, not a. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, a yeah. I'm a doctor, not a. So, cat. do you guys know the Berenstein Bears? Yes, I grew up reading the Berenstein yes. Bears. So, oh, are they? Guys have that one. So, are they the Berenstein Bears or the Berenstein Bears? Berenstein is how it's per- it's, it's how most yeah. people how remember spelt? them as the Berenstein. But you grew up. Would with that them. make like Jewish bears, Berenstein Bears? Well, yeah. the thing is, that's a that's a that's a pronunciation. It's easier to say Berenstein Bears than Berenstein. Stein bears, mm-hmm. so it's just with pronunciation. I didn't grow up with the bears. And see, even Stein growing bears. up with it, we called it Bernstein. We called it Bernstein bears, but is it, it just rolls better. Yeah. Is, it, is it is it English? No. Oh, um, I think uh, the I don't bears, know are where. They English? No, I, I don't think they're U.S. No, where it or originated, but I know the word the Bernstein. I'm pretty sure because Bernstein sounds something of an English thing. Oh, see, for me, it sounds German. Yeah. Okay, go into the movies again. C three PO's <laughs> gold um, uniform. Yes. Is it all gold? Uh, probably. No, not. he's got a silver leg. Yeah, that's right. But most yeah. people don't realize. Yeah. I mean, they they may realize. But if you, details like that, if are you're stupid. using crayons or kids are coloring, oh yeah, you always just do full gold. Yeah, totally. Well, like, now he has like a red arm or something. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. One of the he's newer movies, he's got a red arm or something. <laughs> Okay, more movie stuff. In Risky Business, do you remember Tom Cruise dancing in his underwear? Oh, that's a classic scene. Sure he just comes across seen. and he's yelling at the underwear. And <laughs> the, the Simpsons did a parody of that. Okay, so, so what, what in your memory of the underwear dress shirt and Ray-Bans isn't what actually happened? I, I've never seen this movie, nope. so, oh, so I am He not wasn't wearing sunglasses. The person. He wasn't wearing sunglasses. He wasn't wearing sunglasses. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's probably because his character is, I'm assuming, super associated with the Ray-Bans. Yeah, because like, um, risky business. I've um, never seen. Yeah, it. I guess so. Yeah. So okay. if like his character's always wearing them, you might just assume he's always wearing. Okay. Them. Yeah. Enough with the movies. Darn. Fruit Loops. <gasps> I love Fruit Loops. <laughs> Are Fruit Loops fruit? What do you mean? F R U I T. Fruit Loops. No. No. It's F R O O T. It's what is it? F R O O T. Fruit Loops. Yeah. We're, we're but doing most good people at this. still think it's fruit. They still like the fruity. Yeah. Well, I've never had to spell it. So <laughs> <laughs> if I was spelling it, I would write the spell fruit like you spell fruit. I, I probably would too. But when yeah. you go down the aisle that a zillion so times, that must be so annoying fr- for teachers trying to teach kids how to spell fruit. <laughs> but Fruit Loops is spelled F O O F R O O T. Isn't that how you spell fruit? <laughs> Only if you two can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Looney Tunes. Is it Looney Tunes, like T-O-O-N-S, or Looney Tunes, T-U-N-E-S? Oh. Is it O-O? 
No, it's tunes with a U. Oh, like Looney, yeah. like music the tunes. Music. Yeah. Because of the, the, the first cartoons were always set to a music yeah. Yeah, as well. Yeah, that was when things were good when they were set to the music. Because if you... If you if, if but you, it's a Looney, L-O-O, there's two O's yeah. in the Looney. Yes. So you think that there's the two O's in the tunes, but there's not. But if you, if you, if you remember those cartoons, uh, if you were a certain age, you also had uh, Merry Melodies. And what? Looney Tunes, Merry yeah. Melodies. Right? So it was on the music because there was all oh. music in the background. My childhood. Yes. <laughs> I grew up on Focus on the Family. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. I showed you Looney Tunes. I can show you more Looney Tunes. <laughs> so, here's a shopper one. for little kids. <laughs> the Queen in Snow White. What we think she said was mirror, mirror on, on the, the wall. wall. And it kids all over mirror, mirror. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It was magic mirror on oh. the wall. I didn't even ask you because I, I, I figured you'd, that would be oh, one that I wow. I actually knew about that one. I've always Did said you? mirror, mirror well, on I've, the wall. Well, I've looked into this effect before. So. I've always said mirror, mirror on the wall. Oh, my I God. I I've just watched way too many versions of Snow White. Yeah. Well, I've said it this morning. We're looking in the mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's that guy in there? <laughs> okay. Kit Kat bars. Ew. Is there a dash between the Kit Kat or not a dash? Between I don't the think Kit there's Kat? a dash. <sighs> oh God! I no, know. I would say there's not a dash. Not a dash. Yep. Yep. No, no a that's dash. Right. I'm trying to picture the labels. What I'm trying to do, and I'm like, no, because it's no. like a capital K Kit, and then and a then capital it's right smack up next. Another to it. big capital cat, Kit Kat. Have you guys yeah. seen the Kit Kat so, flavors they have in Japan? So are no, you guys, yes. I don't like Kit Kat. Are you guys fans of Sinbad? Sinbad, like the, 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 uh, the uh, actor, Sinbad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have no so idea during the is. 90s, do you remember a, a movie that Sinbad was in? Yes, I was five years old. Yeah, he was, he was a... <laughs> Maybe. Oh, wait a minute. At the oldest. <laughs> Wasn't he a genie? There wasn't ever a movie with Sinbad where he was a genie in the 90s. Oh. Am I confused? Am I confused? <laughs> but most people remember that they... That there was one. Yeah. A movie where he was a genie? Yeah. They're, they're confusing it with Kazam of 1996, with Shaq starred. There we go. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. Is, it's, it's either him or Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> but most people, if you ask them about the genie movie, they'll say it was Sinbad. Huh. Yeah. That's why. There that's There you why. go. I mean, that's one that, how did that happen? Yeah, well, I mean, they don't, they don't even look the same. They don't even look. people apart? They, they, they don't even look close to Shaq yeah. and Sinbad. And then you kind of feel dumb, and then you're like, oh. Oh, okay. I mean, they're both they're both bi, but Shaq is much darker tone of, and it's, no, they don't even look the same at all, <laughs> at all. See, Kevin, he's just trying to find similarity. I'm just trying to find reason here. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> so I'm gonna do two more. <clears throat> Oscar Meyer Wieners. I'm sorry. What? How do you spell Meyer? M. Oscar Meyer Wieners. M E Y E R S. M what? M E Y E R S. Everybody thinks that. I, I have no idea really? what we're even talking about right now. M A Y E R. Oh. I'm like I don't know. I mean, we look at that Wiener Mobile. Yeah. And, and the, we see that, uh, but if you ask people to spell it, it's Mayer. They'll spell it's it with an Meyer. E rather than an A. It's an really? A. Wow. Oscar Mayer Wieners. Oh, I love that kind of information. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being corrective for correcting me. I These are the really fun like kind of useless facts that you love to know and just bring up randomly. Yeah. I, yeah. I find this a lot of these head. happen when people just mis mispronounce things. Yeah. You your brain will spell it in your head as the pronu- uh, I was as it's pronounced mm-hmm. instead of reading the words and like correcting the pronunciation. It'll it'll change the spelling. Mm, I see. Anyway, I'll do the last one, but anybody that wants to go on with this, there are some... Um, There's a lot just of Google ones. Uh, Mandela effects, and then uh, examples. Mm-hmm. A big and, one that... Sorry. No, go, go. Is uh, go. Lord of the Rings. Um, Gandalf. Yeah. He... A lot of people think he says, run, you fools. This is fly, you Exactly. Fools. It's fly. Which is so much better. It's so much better. <laughs> I had to be confused why you would say fly. <laughs> oh, run. Okay, so there's a there's a really great song by Queen called We Are the Champions. Love it. Okay. Played it. <laughs> and and the the way that most people think the song ends is um no time for losers because we are the champions of the world. Wait, really? People think it ends like that? He doesn't News say flash. of the world. News flash. There's no end of the world. Yeah. Of the world. We are the it's champions. It's in the middle. It's, it's not the start, yeah. middle, or end. The song just ends. We are the champions. Yeah, because it's like a... I'm not going to sing it, 
but like it's like they it repeats it a little bit yeah. and then it like yeah. it goes like a yeah. little quiet. Sorry, I listen to that song all the time because I, I love Queen. So I'm like, wait, people think it ends like that? Like I can hear it in my head right now. It's great. I, I but I thought, thank you, Kevin. I just thought this was so fascinating. It is fascinating because it's a group thing. That's what's yeah. fascinating. It's, fa- it's also fascinating to see how you and I have seen the same thing yet. You might have it completely right, and I'd be completely out of the ballpark. Yeah, I'm wrong. And we both go to court and swear that... Exactly! Was, that and it's it another example, you yeah. know, how eyewitnesses are not as reliable yeah. as you think And so are. people listening, don't trust your brain. Yeah. The brain Reality can be easily check. tricked. So might as well, mean, you might as well name the one you were thinking about Star Wars there. Oh, it's when um, Luke is like... Oh, no, no, Darth Vader's like... Luke, Luke I am yeah, your father. Yeah, he doesn't actually say that. Yeah. It's... It's, it's just no. I, I am your father. That's right. That's yeah. right. He never says Luke. Yeah. I am your father. But pe- people, I'm pretty sure, just changed it because in the brain, it's like Luke. That's who he's talking to. More of his like a and for, reference. And for you, you were doing the tricky thing. You yeah, were thinking. Which one were you thinking of? I was thinking of the beam me up, Scotty, because they don't he actually never say says, Scotty. Scotty, beam it's, me up, Scotty. Yeah, it, that, that line is that. never actually there. Huh. He never once pulls up the, the communicator, bloop, bloop, Scotty, beam me up. It's always never, just beam me up. I mean, after, he never says it. After no. this, how do you take on fake news? <laughs> right, <laughs> people? You know? I mean, as I was going through this, I was going, my God. It's you know. just normal pop culture, and we get it wrong. Imagine. I just take everything with a grain of salt. Like, you know, there's a chance that I might be wrong. Yeah, and, this, and that is okay. And th- th- that's one of the reasons why you know fake news can be so prevalent because we're easily fooled with something mm-hmm. that is available. And another thing that the brain really has a problem with is it has a um, a familiarity bi- bi- bias. Bias. Yes. So mm-hmm. the first thing you hear, you're more likely to believe because going forward, it's familiar to your brain. So you're like, oh, no, but this was correct because it feels more familiar. So it's correct. It's a bit also yeah. when, you, when you listen to a song. And if you listen to a song for the first time, the version you hear is the one you'll like right off the bat. And if you hear that first time that song and a week later you hear a different version of that song, you won't like it as much. You're going to prefer that version you originally heard. So this is one of the reasons why I don't do a whole lot of concerts because singing live doesn't sound at all like the one I heard on the radio. And the one I like is the one I heard on the radio. Mm-hmm. You know. So anyway, God, we could spend an entire day. Yes. We should bring a psychologist. The brain oh, is a fascinating well, thing. <laughs> how, how far along are you in your reading? We don't have to get a psychologist. We've got this lady right here. <laughs> well, I haven't like actually can explain neuro, She can explain neuroscience <laughs> so everybody will understand it. Has anyone, Neuropsychology. Yeah. Has it's, anyone here ever watched uh, Brain Games? No. no. It's on uh, Netflix. Uh, it was on TV, but it is on Netflix now. It's a fantastic show. They're not very long episodes. They're like maybe half an hour, but they're super fun and they teach you about your brain and they also help like mess with your brain because they do little tricks and like show you the f- pitfalls of your thought. Process. Yeah, that's exactly what they do and like why, like which way is the ballerina spinning or both. like yeah. a ballerina can what be is, spinning both ways. What's the name of it? Brain games. Brain games. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic show. All right, my dear Kirsten, you ready for another brilliant moment? Oh, yes. Brought to you by religion. Sounds good to me. <laughs> you were so weird. <laughs> All right, well, End Times broadcaster Rick Wiles closed Ooh. out his True News program on the 27th by warning that the outbreak of the coronavirus is a plague sent by God to purge the world of sin as the last days approach. I of hate religious people. <sighs> First of all, for, for our audience... The because- coronavirus isn't that deadly. Well, yeah. Like, hello, the-, the flu is so much more deadly. Also not caused by the bear. Yes! There's, there's an article with an, <laughs> there's an insane amount of people apparently that are trying to look up the corona beer virus. What? Like, no! Because there's corona beer, right? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel so sorry just, for Corona beer. Let, let me off this rock. I'm done. I'm done. Oh. I'm done. They're just probably, like, sitting there like, you've got to yeah. be kidding they, me. They changed your name to Ebola beer. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Have you seen the thing where it says it goes really great with Lyme disease and it's a picture of a lime? <laughs> That's amazing. That's a great joke. <laughs> That's That's fantastic. Great joke. I did not come up with it, but it is beautiful. That's a beautiful oh. joke. <laughs> um, ironically, he made similar wild predictions during the Ebola outbreak and uh, said that 
Spirit bears witness that this is a genuine plague that is coming upon the earth. Spirit bears? And God is about to purge a lot of sin off this planet. Yeah, that he put there. <laughs> spirit what? bears, and then the white bears in the, in the, in the rainforest. Did he, did he say spirit, spirit bear? bears? Yeah. Spirit bears. I think it's like spirit bears. Bears witness, oh, not okay. an actual oh. like oh, like, the bear. <laughs> like the spirit itself has borne witness to this. <laughs> there you go. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. That makes so much. Not the sense. adorable white bears that we I'm love. Like, I was I was so afraid it was some kind of a badass care bear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a spirit okay, bear. That, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> See, guys, your brain makes. That's wrong right. <laughs> interpretations. The Mandela, the Mandela effect on the <laughs> Uh, plagues are one of the last steps of judgment, he warned, saying no, that not. China is a godless communist government, <sighs> and the United States is okay, not Okay, well, they're much not better. wrong about the communists, oh, no, but... <laughs> Oy. Look at the spiritual rebellion that is in this country, the hatred of God, the hatred of the Bible, the hatred of righteousness. Uh, the funny thing is, the biggest growth in Christianity today is happening in China. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just vile, disgusting people in this country now. No. Transgendering little children, perverting them. Sorry, Look what? at the rapes and the sexual immortality. Yeah, by the church. The immorality and the filth on our TVs and our movies. He's just afraid a transgender child might know Kung Fu. He doesn't. That's all it is. Yeah. So, wow. this is to say, they're claiming the end times. Like, okay, like but usual. That's, that's not new. That's not- no. That's not new. Oh. Actually, we haven't heard an end time prediction in a while there. What, what's, no, we're I just uh, hate when people one. Yeah. like use current news to like just spew fear and uh, hatred. Yeah, Preachers have, have been doing gross. this forever. We haven't had a so world gross. descending tomorrow at three o'clock prediction for a long time. I know it's been a while. Somebody's not I working. Left out. I need, I need yeah. my phone. I need to push mm-hmm. my car. Okay, okay, okay. So Moving on. The free one. Exactly. <laughs> Moving on. So, we all know about Trump's spiritual advisor, Pastor Paula White. Oh, I hate her so much. Yeah. (laughs) She wants to put an end to satanic pregnancies. What does that even mean? I don't even know. So much for being (laughs) pro-life. Well, she probably doesn't think it's a life. She's like, oh, that's a demon being born. In a bizarre rant captured by Right Wing Watch, White takes authority over the marine kingdom, the animal kingdom, and all satanic pregnancies that seek to harm Trump or the church. What do you mean? Uh, Sea worlds against Trump? I can understand that. He's a bit of a beach (laughs) wheel. Don't degrade whales with the comparison to Trump. No, they're actually lighter. (laughs) (sighs) We cancel every surprise from the witchcraft, any spirit of control, any Jezebel. We come against the marine kingdom. We come against the animal kingdom. We break the power in the name of Jesus. We command any satanic pregnancies to miscarry right now. Yeah, but what is a satanic pregnancy? Do you honestly think they're going to say that? what does she mean? Well, Satan's just going around fucking everything. (laughs) Don't, don't. But like... No, that's Zeus. (laughs) Right... Ugh. Lucian Graves, who's the... Oh, oh she's getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know where you're going with this. And spe- on that note with Lucian Graves, the Satanic Temple responded. Good. And Graves is the co-founder and spokesperson for the Satanic Temple and wrote an open letter to Paula White. Dear Pastor White, Greetings from the Satanic Temple. We were very pleased this weekend to learn that you had recently publicly prayed for God to induce miscarriages and satanic pregnancies. At a time in which Satanists have had to fight desperately to retain their bodily autonomy in the face of increasingly restrictive anti-abortion laws, we are glad that your logic must necessarily lead you to... lead you to support unrestricted abortion access for Satanists seeking to end unwanted pregnancies. I am writing to ask you to take a bolder step in na- in the name of your faith and lend your support to our religious reproductive rights campaign, which seeks to invoke religious exemption from abortion restrictions on behalf of Satanists. 
<laughs> Brilliant and move. After stating a great deal of pertinent facts concerning a woman's right to choose, the letter concludes by thanking White for her support. It was a true relief to all of us at the Satanic Temple to see you in particular defending our healthcare rights, as we know that you will put your substantial fortune where your mouth is. You may send a check directly to our headquarters. Fuck well, yes! <laughs> that, that has to be oh. one of the epic best responses to nonsense that I've ever read well, in my life. It, 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 it is. Beautiful. It's Perfect. a great response that we can appreciate. I don't think Paula White's even going to understand. Who oh, no, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And, and the fact that she doesn't understand it is perfect. Well, yeah, but the, 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 that's the problem. This, this is like speaking to the, uh, preaching to the choir because we, <laughs> I hate to say this, but you kind of need a certain intellectual level to understand what the hell he's talking about. And I don't think she or her flock really understand that. But I, th- I think he knew that when he wrote it. <laughs> yeah, this was 100% not written with any serious intent yeah. behind it. Oh, man, fantastic. That was great. It was written so beautiful. I still want to know what a satanic pregnancy is. <laughs> Rosemary's baby. There we go, baby. <laughs> I'm just like, I want to know in her mind what she was talking yeah. about. This one, you're really horny. Well, like, is horns. it... I, I don't even know. I just, I'm just really curious what she thinks a satanic. Nobody knows is. what she thinks she's, because she, she's not thinking. She just, just, she just spews out. Yeah, they just say words. Words. I just don't want to know. I'm curious. They, yeah. just, they just say words that sound like something, and that's all they do. And then they get a line of applause. Yeah. Like, if I had to take a guess, I would say it's any pregnancy that they don't approve of. Yeah, I, I would actually agree with that. Mm-hmm. Or like pregnancies of like people who are going to, like, oppose him. Oppose Trump. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Babies don't have that kind of political Well, I mean, that. in the future. Because <laughs> she thinks God can, like, perceive the future, so she's like... Yeah, but... She also uh, thinks she can talk to God. It's yeah. interesting that so the babies are either really going to be non-Trumpers or Trumpers before they're born. <laughs> she can pre- Usually you can predict it by their yeah. parents. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> It's usually how things like that go. Yeah. All right. There are us outliers, though. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much, ladies. So let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be talking to Jason Hennerfield. I'm excited. So stay with us. I'm Amy with a Y. And I'm Amy with an I. And we're the hosts of Secular Soup, where each week we offer up a bowl of real talk about atheism, feminism, politics, parenting, and whatever else we want to talk about because it's our podcast. Just listen to what these random dudes are saying about our show. Secular Soup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you mean talk soup, though. It was uh, like a 90s show on E! that would put a whole bunch of Jerry Springer stuff on. That's the one I think you mean. I've never heard of either of these Amy characters with which you refer. Hmm, Amy and Amy. Never heard of such a name. My goodness, for Fox Creek, what is that, like Bill and Ted's Adventures or something? <laughs> Amy and Amy from Secular Soup. No, no, I've never heard of that. Wait, wait, no, that's that porno, Succulent Soup. No, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, with the twins. Yeah. I don't know why parents would name their both their twins Amy. That seems like that could get kind of confusing. But uh, not for the porno. For the porno, it was fine. It didn't even, didn't even matter. So if you like extremely foul-mouthed ladies with opinions, this is the podcast for you. Grab a bowl and taste the magic. Slurp even this. <laughs> I'm the Supreme Irreverend Dr. Randy Tyson from the Legion of Reason Diversion. Join me and my co-hosts, Christine Shelska, Twyla, and Nate Phelps, as we explore issues at the intersection of atheism, humanism, and skepticism. Topics range from alternative medicine to the interference of religion in public policy. We often have special guests to help us understand the topic du jour. Previous guests include biologist Jerry Coyne, ex-Muslim author Ali Rizvi, philosopher Peter Bogosian, and the late physicist Victor Stanger. You can watch us on the Legion of Reason YouTube channel or subscribe to the audio version through your favorite podcatcher such as iTunes or Stitcher. And don't forget to like the Legion of Reason Facebook page. Is 
that whenever somebody seriously represents his belief that Elvis is still alive in a conversation, in, in, on a first date, at a lecture, at a job interview, mm-hmm. uh, he immediately pays a price. Yeah. Yeah. He, he pays a price in ill-concealed laughter. Right. Okay. Now, surely you can agree with that. That, that, that is a good thing. Now, he can, now, then he could rattle on about, this is not a scientific claim. Uh, this is a matter of faith. You know, when I look at you, I, I see you might be Elvis. I mean, he, he, could, he could do this. guest represents something pretty cool because I think our show kind of rocks. Well, we actually brought in a rocker this time. Oh, we got thanks. Jason Hannerfield. He's a rocker and <laughs> songwriter. He's a snappy dresser and a snazzy dresser. Jason, thank you so much for being on the show with us. Hey, thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure to be here. You say that now, you might regret that. Well, like, like, Life is full of regrets, man. It's how you handle it. You know, Jason, you have a very good... Uh, you, get, you, you get to be the first guest on the show that's been nominated for, well, actually, one Canadian Atheist Podcast of the Year. So imagine that. You're the very first I... one. <laughs> Appreciate that. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> so, so, Jason, for our show, for our listeners that might not be aware of your work and all that, can, maybe you'll give us a quick bio as to who Jason Hanfield is. Well, I'm just a, a normal everyday guy you know working i i was a single dad for a while so i do have two children they're grown up now thank god <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah um i i've been a musician now for almost 45 years and uh you know that's what i do i i, I like to i like to make music i like to produce it um mix and master it i've been in the live bands i've been, i've been a professional musician for 10 years and uh, I have a lot of fun with it. And music is, it's not just my hobby, it's my love. That's the, how I like to get my messages across. That's, ha- that's my therapy for when, uh, if I'm feeling down or if I'm feeling excited, um, my favorite thing in the world to do is play with other musicians that are, you know, just have the same mindset and, and the same caliber of musicianship. It's, it's, a, it's a pleasure. And then, of course, None of this would mean anything without the fans like you guys and the people out there that, that listen to, to music. Support your local band. I certainly can appreciate that. You yourself are an yeah. atheist, and you're using some, some not all your songs, but some of your songs have an atheist flavor to them. Now, if uh, before yeah. we get into all this, maybe we should ask about your apostasy. Were you always, uh, were you always an atheist? Or did you come out of the faith? What's the story there? Well, here's the thing. I, I'm actually, I consider myself a baby atheist, but I'm, I'm really cranky. <laughs> <laughs> I am, oh man, let me tell you. Well, and, and the story behind this is just so fantastic. You know, everybody talks about technology and, and this and that. I actually became an atheist because I was just playing around one day and I asked Siri if God existed. And of course, she gave me back some snappy answer like, well, I'm not a human being, so I really can't answer that. You could, anyone who owns an iPhone, go ahead and ask Siri if God exists. <laughs> so, so then, when, I, of course, I didn't like her answer. Um, I, told, I told her to search the web. And the first video that popped up was William Lane Craig versus Christopher Hitchens. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, that'll make an atheist and out of you. I, <laughs> and I, was at, I was at work that day, and I started listening to this around lunch. I worked in the warehouse. I could have the headphones. No one was around to disturb me. I was doing my thing. And literally by 2.30 in the afternoon, I walked into my boss's office and said, I got to go home now. <laughs> because I'm literally, literally after 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 that you know that, that debate, I realized that I, I've been wasting a lot of time with this oh. because I was actually my family. Um, interesting story, and I'll make it really short. I have a Jewish side of my family, very very Jewish. We we, we are uh, Ashkenazi Jews. We come from Russia. Okay. Okay. Somehow. Uh, my grandfather was actually a German Jew in Germany before the um, before the Second World War, before the Nazis. Wow. 
Wow. And he actually, they actually got out of Germany and came to the States. Okay. Wow. And, and my grandfather, uh, he married a woman that he met from Cuba of all places. You know, her last name was Martinez. Oh, wow. And, um, he, be, he and then he joined the military to go back to fight the Germans. And, but his whole side of the family, because my grandmother, may she rest in peace, she, uh, she told my grandfather, well, I'm not going to be a, a, a Jew. You have to be a Roman Catholic. And he said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, my parents raised me as a Lutheran Protestant. Okay. So my father used to read, you know, he used to read parts of the Bible to me. And, of course, I, I was young and, and very malleable and... You know, I I never really gave it much thought. I just thought that okay, this is history, this is what happened, and you know, I never I never once thought about like, well, well, wait a minute, you know, there's something wrong here. And that, and but again, leading up to that point where I had when I watched that video with William Lake Craig and Christopher Hitchens, and then I said, okay, wait a minute, there's got to be arguments on both sides. And so after a number of years of watching debates, reading, reading a bunch of books, and then actually just taking the time to, to figure out, okay, how, what are my feelings on this? I decided that I am atheist for the simple reason that I cannot defend the position of uh, a, a, a supernatural being known as a god. I can't do it. I can't do it without presuppositional fallacies or inference that just imagines the the, the, the the resulting inference leads to n absolutely nothing that there's evidence for whatsoever. Hear, hear. Preach, my friend. Preach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's very interesting. And, and to be honest with you, to be honest with you, I, I, I honestly have to say, the best argument they have is the teleological argument. But again... We're smashing that argument to smithereens every day. And you have to make a choice. If I can't, you know, it's one thing to infer to something that actually exists that you have evidence for, mm -hmm. you know, but it's one thing to infer to the supernatural or the, meta or the metaphysical that you have no evidence for and think that you have some basis in authority. It just, it makes absolutely no sense to me. No, I totally so agree. I can't, I can't do it. I, I totally agree. I, the theological argument, by the way, is uh, for those uh, listeners that might not understand, is they infer essentially that God exists because of the order Are that, you they, that they find, the order that you find in nature, if you wish. They're basically oh saying, "Oh my gosh!" They're, they're basically saying, if the universe had been created by itself, there would not be such order. In yeah, I, I, I recently had a debate with a fella, and he told me that the fine tuning of the universe you know, infers the existence of a God. Wow. And I'm like, well, well, let me ask you a simple question. Why would a God need to fine tune anything? Why can't a God just create a universe? So I said, was God just happening by when our universe exploded at the Big Bang? And he said, oh, wait, I got to get my hands around this so I could fine tune it so that there could be life. And they, and they said, well, you know, the, 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 the number of the, the chance that life being, you know, um, you know, being in the universe is, is too high. It's too high. I'm like, listen, <laughs> okay, the universe is not fine-tuned for life. No, life it is not. Life is fine-tuned for the universe. Yes. Period. Exactly. exactly. That's it. That's the only way it can be. No, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very valid argument. And kudos for you to make, it, to make that argument very uh, coherent and good for, for people. Also, I hate the, uh, the argument when they always say, you know, uh, why is there something? Well, why, why makes you yeah. think that nothing is the default state? Maybe having something well, is the default state. Why would you infer all of a sudden that there has to be nothing as a default state? So, no, no anyway, we're not going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> and cute, two hours. Oh, I can sum that up in one sentence. By all means. Why is there something? Because nothing is not a natural state. There we go. And, Law, and Lawrence, Krauss, Lawrence Krauss can answer that more fully than I can. Nothingness. In the sense that theists think of nothingness in the universe, physics destroys that. Quantum physics destroys that. The nothing that you're thinking of, it, it's it's not a natural state. That's why there's something. But what you what you're not what you can't do is put something before that something, 
so that it be to make something. You can't you can't in, infer the supernatural when you have absolutely no evidence for it. You, you know what? And, and no matter what no matter what the numbers say, those numbers prove that yes, there is a chance of it happening, but it's not. It it happens. We're here. You know, I only need one example, and unfortunately, yeah, it sucks that we only have the one example of, of our lives being in the universe, but, you know, maybe someday we'll find other life in the universe and, and see how they, how that sits with the sea. You know, Jason, you just destroyed my entire image of what a rocker, hardcore rocker is, because you, you're way too brilliant for this. Hey. I was I was kind of I was kind of hoping you'd be saying, "Man, I'm gonna go out there and party with beer," but no, he's out there making theological arguments. That's country singers. Maybe. <laughs> well, I, I always thought it would, I always thought it would be a great idea to start even a Facebook page uh, that specifically pinpoints arguments against theistic claims. Mm. For example, the the the, the, the teleo, uh, teleo, uh, teleological argument. Or the cosmological argument, or the the argument from morals, and uh, that's another mm-hmm. favorite of mine. You know, it, yeah. it's 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 amazing how how much of this stuff constantly gets repeated by theists, especially even on Facebook, yes. or you know, on, or, or on Twitter or any other places. They keep using these same old arguments. You know, and and it's just like these have been smashed already by people who are ten times smarter than I'll ever be. Yeah, you know and the, the the one the moral the uh, the moral argument really really burns me up. I I still don't understand. You know the, this whole objective morality thing. They don't seem to realize that the only reason we have this set of morality is because of what we are as a social species. If if for example yeah. we were instead of being a social species of primate, if our, pri- our 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 species had evolved to be very individual like tigers, tigers don't acclimate in group. Yeah. We'd have an entirely different set of morals. You know, killing yeah. another per- person may not be such a big deal for a tiger at that point because you know it doesn't really, <laughs> because they're they're, they're 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 solitary creatures. When you live in a group right. as a social species, killing another person is a big deal. So I, I even put in the, the argument that what if an alien species comes and lands here? Would they really look at this as objective morality? It's it's so so much bullshit. It's so, yeah. it's so <laughs> cool. and they can't see it. It is. I, I, my favorite thing to do, you know, like I said, I'm all my game is always to streamline the epistemology. Mm-hmm. So if I have a theist telling me, well, there are objective morals. Then I ask them kindly, well, can you give me an example of an objective moral? Ooh, yeah. yeah. They'll give you okay. usually and they'll, rape. Usually oh. they'll, say things, they'll say something like, well, you, um, thou shalt not kill. That's objective yeah. moral. But, okay, that, fine. Is it really an objective moral, though? Nah. Because, uh, or Not always. <laughs> the, the, well, you know, sure. I mean, if you look up the if you look up the definition of what an objective moral is, uh, I forget what it says at this point. But the, let me get to the point I'm trying to make. Morals come from people living in a society. Yeah. Okay, and the reason why that is is because it's not about what I want. It's about what you know. It's it's about what when you're forced to live with other people. You have to experience the moral dilemma. Mm-hmm. If you're getting your morals from a, a book or a god, your morals are become arbitrary just like that god who doesn't believe in any other god because he's a god. And once your morals become arbitrary, you become amoral. You are not engaging in the moral dilemma. So let, let's take... that, Does that make any sense? I mean, it's... It, yeah. So to me, to, to me, it's easy for a theist to say, well, you know, it, um, you're moralist because you're, all of your morals are, are subjective. Mm-hmm. Well, the reason why my morals are subjective is because I'm not, I'm not basing my morals on my preference. I'm basing my morals on what's going to be good, better for everybody else, not including me. Well, you know, you know, the it, funny thing, like, you know, they don't even seem to realize that even on a societal level, our quote unquote objective morality is subjective to the society, right? You don't seem to realize. Yeah, of course that, it is. You, we, yeah, you're not supposed to kill a person, but if we're going to war against the bad guys in Nazi Germany, yeah, we're killing a whole bunch of people there. 
So you know, yeah, we yeah. decided as society that it was fine to kill Nazis. So, <laughs> so it's subject. It, your objective morality just became subjective all of a sudden mm-hmm. because you need yeah. you, the situation change. They don't seem to understand that. So anyway, let's take a quick pause here and uh, we'll uh, we'll play one of your songs. This one is called Epistemology. Uh, what can you tell about yeah. tell us about that song? Well, the, the, I had I had uh, I had re- read a, a it was a, a book actually. Um, let me let me see if I can look at. I think it's called Street Epistemology. I forget the author's name. You may be familiar with it. Um, and let me see if I have a uh, if I could pop it up here for a second. What's his name? Street Epistemology. Oh, you mean? Uh, uh, yeah, Street Epistemology was yeah. the name of the name of the book. Anthony Peter, Peter, Peter Bogosian. Oh. Peter Bogosian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Peter, well, not the guy who but a manual. Anthony. Anthony. Yeah, it's called a manual yeah. for creating atheists. Yeah, yes. that's that's Peter's that's, book, but it's Anthony that has taken that to the streets and, yes. and written Anthony more Magnum about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Pete, exactly. Yeah, Pete. Pete's been up here. Um, so uh, a, a couple of times, and and we we know him, we love him, and then Anthony, you know, took um, took over, really working the street level uh, of a piece. So we love both of them. Yeah, yeah, I, and so I, I took the inspiration from reading that book and 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 just um, my my own personal feelings. So if you listen to the song, I'm very very straightforward about what I'm talking about, and and it, you know, I thought it, I thought I, um, you know, put it, put the pieces together into a great hard rocking atheist theme song. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So let's take a quick pause and let's play that for our listeners. We'll be right back.
were back. And now that was uh, epistemology. So, uh, yeah, that was a very interesting song for sure. And like you said, you certainly uh, don't have your tongue in your pocket for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of my favorite one of my favorite lines from the song is um, now, you know, where, where they're, they're literally selling you this idea of a god because all it is is a claim. It's nothing more than a claim that they get from a book. And I'm constantly arguing with theists about their basis in, in authority. Mm -hmm. Because without that basis in authority, they have no basis in morality, no basis in, in a designer. There's no basis in a creator. There's none of it there. It's, it's just this hollow out idea that never gets past. The only place God manifests itself is in the minds that think it. I oh, totally agree. man, there's a T-shirt the, 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 for me. That's a me, brother. Yeah. 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 A, ho a hollow idea that manifests itself in the mind. Yeah. That is totally, absolutely correct. So I, is that one of your earlier um, songs, Jason, or was that fairly recent? Uh, no, that song. I, I'm I'm not to, I'm not sure as far as the date. It might be it might be a couple of years um, old right now, like maybe uh, three, like two or three years old. That's okay. That, that, you can of course find you can of course find my my, my newer stuff is the the just the different topics. I have I have a slow a really nice slow more recent tune that I did. Um, it's uh, and uh, it's called Angel. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And, um, that, you know, that song does have, it has some, it has a line in there where, you know, uh, you know, I'm not really, you know, I'm not doing anything interesting today, so the gods aren't paying attention. And, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool tune, you know, but it, it's, you know, I didn't consider really it, it, to be one of my more straightforward atheistic theme songs, like, like, uh, th this, this last one. Uh, so all these songs can be found on your SoundCloud page. You can just go to Jason Hannerfield, and you'll find all that there. Like he said, he's the guy who looks like a reject of ZZ Top. That's awesome, <laughs> uh, Jason. Yeah, the, the cool thing about SoundCloud is, if you love the song or absolutely hate it, you can, um, you know, leave a remark on my page. Unlike some theistic videos on YouTube that you can't make comments on, mm -hmm. I welcome your comments, whether they're good or bad. Fantastic. Mm. Jason, what do you think the role of the artist is? Uh, in, uh, I mean, there's a lot of intellectuals in the atheist movement, and there's a lot of, you know, scientists, intellectuals, and all that. There's not a whole lot of artists. Or, you know, if there, there is, you know, we don't hear about them a whole lot. Do you, do you really think that the, the artists have a lot, or should have a lot to say about such a hot debate? Absolutely. I mean, if you know any, any anything that anything that helps the uh, um, get the point across in the society that we live in, mm -hmm. absolutely, the artist should harp on that. And it's a, let me tell you something. It's it's a dangerous thing because you know you may not be appreciated for doing that. So many artists. Um, you know they get they get ridiculed for things that they sing or or, or say. But if no one's doing it, like uh, a, a good example of this is, you know, why do I have to get my straight up news from comedians? Because yeah. comedians are the only ones who are, are allowed to give you straight up news under the guise of comedian or it's comedy. Yeah. You know, so yeah. instead of actually like, oh wow, that's really messed up, we'll just all laugh about it. You know, but guess what? You know what he's this comedian or this artist musician is actually saying is the truth now do you feel do you feel you know, that, maybe that's exactly what's the, the, the problem here because we talk about two different kind of languages here i think i think when you talk in the, the realm of scientists and all that they talk about intellectual you know mm -hmm. it's very logical and all that but the artist represents the emotional side of an equation and i think you know yeah. when, you, when you're talking to believers that's what the, that's their anchor to their god. It's it's the emotional aspect of it, and I think I think you guys, you artists, actually have probably the inside track, if you can uh, forgive the metaphor here, as to how to speak to these people. Well, you know, it's no accident that religious groups have hymns yeah. and songs. I mean, it, 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 they have to. That's that's part of, of what what cements the intellectual yeah. or bypasses the ridiculous. It's going right straight to the heart and to the emotions. Well, yeah, art speaks to people in a, in ways that scientists and intellectuals don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I, th- I think I think people like Jason and uh, his work is extremely important for that. What do you think, Jace? Well, absolutely. I mean, look, the, the the one thing that really, you know, really just blows my mind is, is how all of a sudden every atheist on the planet is now a Vulcan. We're completely emotionless. We have like like all of a sudden I, I can't I can't watch a, a good rom-com, you know, that, that maybe makes references to God. I mean, I, I don't get it. It's, it's like it's like sitting a theist down and saying you're not going to like Star Trek or you're not going to like Star Wars because it's all science fiction. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's insanity yeah. to think that there's no emotion, you know, in, in an atheist, because we may not believe that the same thing that you do. No, we're very passionate about it. I love, you know, this argument like, oh, life has no meaning because you have no supreme being above you. Well, guess what? Life means so much more to me now because I only have one. It's yeah. a once around. That's it. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think I think you guys are on the verge of being able to speak to to uh, the believers and slowly but surely, you know, bring them to reason. I mean, uh, even when you, you you look at the 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 majesty of of space, for example, you know, artist Uh-oh. renditions of what goes on and the pictures and the beauty of it is what appeals to the public, not the mathematical equations. Right, exactly. Because, you know what, I mean, you should be able to, you know, offer your argument straightforwardly and in, in, in layman's terms, so to speak. I mean, it's, you know, and that's what I try to do. I, I, I don't try, the, when I'm in a debate on Facebook, I hate posting, you know, videos to go to about this, or this is what this scientist said, unless it comes down to that. You know, it, it's, I, I much prefer to try to use you know, my, my feelings and, and, and how, uh, and, and my straightforward answers that I've come to on my own to try to, to, to see if that's enough to begin the, the other person who I'm debating with to, to think of, to see things in, in a little bit different way. And I expect that to them. Whenever I approach a debate, I approach it in the way it should be approached. I am ready to accept the fact that I may be wrong. But again, you know, I have a, a criteria that has to be met. Uh, I, I love the question of, well, what evidence would convince you that a God exists? And I tell them, I don't know, because you can't, you can't describe what a God is. Just, you picture it as this timeless, spaceless, uh, you know, uh, transcendent being. Well, what does that mean? You know, what can I expect from this being? You yeah, know, it's more than that, because they, it, that yeah, being... It, it's, that being... It's, it's, you know, religion is vague as far as its understanding of God. So I always say, well, then you're agnostic because you don't know anything about it. And that, and then all of a sudden, oh, well, I believe. And, well, no, really? The both of us. You know, I, like people ask me, well, what am I? I'm, I'm atheist. But in, in the end, it's, what it really comes down to is agnosticism because you, I can't literally say there is no God. I can't say that. It's not logically correct. No, I, so, as much as they they shouldn't be able to say, well, there is one. Well, if there is one, then give me give me your proof. Well, I can't because it's metaphysical or supernatural. And then at that point, it's just like, well, then I'm sorry. You know, you're you're. I'm perfectly fine with you having a personal God, but once you try to manifest your God beyond that point, you're going to have a hard time. No, and to also answer your question as to, you know, what would convince you of uh, the, the existence of a God, in the description of their, their own God, he's omniscient and omnipotent. So you don't need to know. That God apparently knows what he would need to do to convince you. Right. So then the question, well, why, then, why doesn't he? Yeah, of course, the, the God may, but, that, that, but how does the person who's telling you about the God know anything about it whatsoever? No. They, how did they know? They don't. They make it up. No, they can't. They, they can't possibly. And if they claim that they do... Then they're they're either indoctrinated to the point that they don't understand what they're talking about, or they're straight up lying to you. That's right. That's right. Jason, um, as an American and living in New York and all that, when you look at the future of atheism, no, I think he's in New Jersey. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, New Jersey. Well, close that's enough. That's okay. Sometimes I, I, I feel I was, like I still live in New trying, York. <laughs> I was trying to save your reputation, okay, Jason. I was trying. to... For the audience, he's in not in day. Jersey. He's in New York. Okay, guys, <laughs> New York. Yeah, Doug, dude, don't be selling, don't be selling my my New York street creds away. <laughs> as 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 an American, Jason, when you look at uh, the future of atheism, are you? <laughs> 
Ooh, what the hell was that? <laughs> We're being watched, apparently. Jason, you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still here. We, we just had to go through a toll booth, and the, the government made sure that I only still have two bathrooms in my house. But go ahead. <laughs> So, Jesus Christ, I thought he was kidnapped by aliens there for a second. <laughs> right? I'm like, wow. <laughs> Apparently we're not alone. Okay. To answer, the, yeah. to answer the question, like I said, as an American, and you look at the future of atheism in your country and your political state that you guys are in with Mango Mussolini, are you positive or are you negative about the future? Um, of course I'm positive. Look, a, a lot of people are, you know, they're, they're big. We're, we're living in the next renaissance. And I love the scene from start to Star Trek, the undiscovered country, with Kirk is trying to save the uh, the, the Klingon fellow there, the, the their representatives uh, who's dying, and he knows that someone from his own is trying to assassinate him, and it's, don't let it end this way. Hmm. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's and it, it takes you to that point where you're like, we're going to have the hardest time living in it. That's all of, all of this in this fighting between back and forth between atheists and, and theists. If, if you haven't noticed that the theists have upped their game, you're not paying attention. Yeah. And especially as we come out, especially as we discover new sciences, especially in quantum physics, they're right there on top of it to, to cherry pick every, the things that they like, the things that are still vague enough to point to the God that they believe in. While we're still struggling, we're just trying to get those answers that are going to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm very happy to, to see the push, to, you know, to keep science in our schools. I'm not happy at all when I hear that you know Trump is allowing you know schools. You know, it's one thing to teach about the religions of the world in school, but if you're going to indoctrinate children into a specific religion. It's, it's unacceptable to me. It's unacceptable to me that a Muslim child should have to go to a public school and sit there and listen to the story only about Jesus Christ. That's not fair, and it, that's not what secular society is for. We're there to, to, to you know, we're, America is a melting pot. If, if you've forgotten that message, then you're, you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, I feel very strongly, especially when it comes to public schools, and all this religious stuff, I mean, how lazy do theists have to be that you can't even teach this stuff at home to your own children? You want the public schools now to teach it? I mean, give me a break. Why should I have to pay my tax dollars for it when Hobby Lobby turns around and says they're not going to pay for contraceptives for their employees? I mean, give me a break. Yeah. It shouldn't be happening, but this is, this is religion infiltrating our government as it always has tried to do, and it's getting worse. So we have to fight against that. And the more kids that are growing up in a world where they realize they don't have to listen to this story and, and just accept it, they can make, decide on their own, then we're, you know, because we're at the front lines right now in the beginning of all of this, really. I mean, this only started back in, what, the 2000s when the, the Four Horsemen came out with all of their books and they really pushed everything forward and told everybody, look, it's okay not to believe. You can say this out loud. Mm -hmm. But even today, there are still people who will lose their lives if they come out. Yeah, you know, maybe not so much in America. In America, yeah, you'll lose your family, maybe some friends. That's a hard thing to go through. But imagine those people, those Muslims, you know, or those Buddhists in, in other countries where, I mean, it's almost, it, it's the, the idea of not believing is still so sacrilege that they will kill you for it. It's, you know, we are going to have the hardest time living in it. And that's what we're doing. But so you got to, you know, you got to be strong. This is not an easy thing to come to. It's not an easy thing to preach. And it's, it, and it's very, very difficult. But, you, you know, you don't have to. I'm very lucky in the sense that, you know, my father, he's, he's already passed on. But I do live with my mom who's... I've broken her down from a Roman Catholic. I've got her now to a, she's a theist, at least, which I can work with, you know? <laughs> Best of luck with that, my friend. Best of luck with that. Yeah. So, Jason, thank you so much for being on the show today. We really appreciate your time. Um, before we let you go, uh, a couple of things. Uh, if people want to find out more about your work and all that, where can they reach you? They can reach me on Facebook. Uh, just type in Jason Hannafeld. And, and again, there's another Jason Hannafeld. Uh, he's a young fellow. 
You want the guy that's old, more old and decrepit looking that looks like a Trump supporter, but he's definitely not. <laughs> and, of course, your SoundCloud page, uh, Jason right. Handerfeld as well. You'll find all the tracks there. Fantastic. Uh, Jason, um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna end the show with uh, your another one of your songs called Blood of Mercy. You want to give us a quick uh, uh, a quick uh, bio quickly on uh, what the Blood of Mercy was all about? Yeah, that's that's just a, a, a testing of the waters. Um, uh, uh, finally, the idea of you know I wanted to do a, a, a song with an atheistic theme that was a hard rocker, and um, pretty much it, it's you know what I'm trying the message I'm trying to get across is. That um, there's this blood of mercy. There's no God, especially the Bible, especially the God of the Bible. I love when people say that this God is filled with love, filled with mercy, filled with forgiveness. And I have this this thing where I I don't think that this God has any human virtues. We get to, those are human virtues: love and forgiveness and mercy. People project this onto this absent phantom to try to prop it up because that's what a God is. A God is supposed to be a supreme being. It's supposed to be above you. Mm-hmm. Now, as a theist, it's easy to think that way and that, you know, you have to try to aspire to be this thing. But you know what? If you read the Bible, it's all there in black and white. This God shows no examples of mercy, no examples of love. No examples of forgiveness, and if he had any of those virtues before any of this stuff was written, I mean, think about it. Mm-hmm. He, he had to drown the world yeah, and everything in it except for nine people. That, is he showing mercy? Is he showing forgiveness? Is he, I mean, is that even thoughtfulness? I, I don't even know what that is. I mean, I could go on and on about this, but just remember this little clip. All of the virtues that he has put on there, absent phantoms, they're all stolen from us. This is how we emerge um, through evolution and through moral evolution to come to the situation that we're in now, living in a society with many people where we have to judge uh, not only uh, our actions and be responsible for our own actions, but how they affect and the, and the consequences that those actions are experienced by the others that we live in society with. It's just that simple. It is that simple. Thank you so much, Jason, for being with us today. But before I let you go, i got to have you say, Hi, this is Jason Hannafield, and I took a left at the valley. Hey, this is Jason Hannafield, and I took a left at the valley. And that was Jason Hannafield. He's great. Rocker. We have some cool guests. Once in a while, we have some musical ones. He's cool. He's got the intellectual and the rocker. Man, what a combination. He's, yeah, yeah he, he's great. He's not just a pretty face. Uh, no. He can to- totally do that. And I, I really love the fact that, you know, <laughs> the image you have of a rocker like that is more of a guy, you know, that he's smoking, he's drinking, he's partying, you know, and you, you talk to a guy like Jason, and all of a sudden he's talking about street epistemology here and theological arguments, and you're looking, holy crap, hold on a second. <laughs> hey, some guys can do two things at I'm once. really not. He at can this, multitask. Yeah, apparently. at this point I'm really not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't judge a book by its cover. No, absolutely. Don't judge a book yeah. by, by its cover. So uh, look up uh, Jason Hannerfeld on his uh, uh, SoundCloud page is where you'll find uh, his tracks. And uh, you'll find uh, a lot of interesting, interesting tracks. They're not all atheist-style tracks. He, d- he does uh, sing about a wide variety of subjects. But he's certainly an artist to discover for all of us music lovers out there. Perfect. All right, moving on. Well, that's it. That's the end of our show. Thank you so much for guest Jason Hannerfeld. Not Hannerfeld, like he keeps saying, like an idiot. I'm sorry, Jason. It's okay, Kevin. We all still love you. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank you, listener, for being with us today. Uh, You can find us at leftedvalley.com. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, at LATV Podcast. You can send us an email at leftedvalley at outlook.com. You can send your complaints to Nancy on the ground floor. Beware the incoming grenade. Uh, you can give us a five star review where you find us. It helps us and helps others find the show. Or you can become a patron yeah. like our friend uh, Freethinker215 and Adrian. And you get a lot of behind the scenes that you'll get to hear during the normal show. You can hear more about my horrible life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up. But it's 
an award winning company. Exactly. Like award winning. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. because after all, we are the. <laughs> we are now an award winning show. Yeah. I know, right? It's like, take that secular soup. Yeah, of now, course. We, now we've got a What standard. award have you had? What They're going to make their own award for themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They probably will. <laughs> Okay, so coming up next week, we'll have a Dave Warnock, and he's the guy that's suffering with ALS. He's dying, he's an atheist, and we're going to be listening to his very, very powerful story. So that's going to be interesting. And we'll have Chris Shelton as well, for we'll be dis- discussing Scientology. Our old friend Thomas Westbrook is coming back. Nice. And he'll be there at the end of February, and as well... Oh, sorry. And uh, let's see. And our, do- our old friend, Dr. Ben Davis, also oh, returns. Uh, 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 we'll be talking about the problem with pseudoscience. And for March the 7th, we're going to put to rest once and for all this prank war with uh-oh. Secular Soup with a couple of very special guests that I am not naming. Oh. Amy, Amy, <laughs> I will accept your surrender now. And I will avoid the humiliation that is coming your way. If you're listening, if you don't, March 7th is going to be your downfall. Uh oh. It's going to be the master stroke from Left of the Valley that will for sure cement us as a praying master in this war. Now, now you got to design something that lives up to all no, the hype. No, it's you know? already designed. It's oh, already designed. The plans oh. are in the works. Oh. The machine is turning. Uh oh. If Amy and Amy surrender now, I will stop the machine. That little it's, hamster is running, working really yeah, hard. Really, really hard. Oh. So anyway. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Until next time. Oh, you know what? I'm going to quit the, our music here because, after all, we're going to end with Blood of Mercy from Jason Hannerfield. Great. Uh, Hannerfield. My God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sorry, Jason. Thank you, guys. Until next time. <laughs>